When we think of particles, we usually think of electrons, protons, or neutrons, the building blocks of visible matter. But there's another category of particles that are nearly impossible to see, feel, or even comprehend, but that permeate everything around us. Neutrinos. These ghost particles pass through our bodies every day without leaving a trace, and their impact on Earth and space remains subtle until researchers create specialized tools to study them. Neutrinos are like space ninjas. They silently and elusively penetrate our planet and everything on it. Neutrinos are elementary particles with almost zero mass, no electric charge, and interact with matter extremely weakly. They are born in thermonuclear reactions of stars, including our Sun, as well as in supernova explosions and as a result of cosmic rays. Unlike other particles, neutrinos barely interact with matter, which makes them invisible to most of our devices. The history of the discovery of the neutrino is full of scientific intrigue and unexpected twists. In 1930, Austrian physicist Wolfgang Pauli faced with a mysterious discrepancy in the energy balance during beta decay, proposed the existence of a new particle. In his letter, he suggested that this elusive particle must have an extremely small mass and not interact with matter, thus explaining the violation of the law of conservation of energy. Pauli even jokingly called his proposal a desperate act, realizing how revolutionary his idea was. However, neutrinos remain theoretical for several decades. It was not until 1,956 that physicists Frederick Reines and Clyde Cowan were able to experimentally confirm the existence of neutrinos by observing their interaction with atoms in a special installation near a nuclear reactor. This discovery was a turning point in particle physics and earned Reines the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1,995. Decades later, the quest for a deeper understanding of neutrinos has led to one of science's most ambitious projects, the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory, located in the heart of Antarctica. But why Antarctica? What makes this icy continent the perfect place to hunt for the elusive particles? The point is that Antarctica provides unique conditions for detecting neutrinos. The deep and clear Antarctic ice serves both as a medium for registering particles and as a natural shield against background radiation. At depths of 1,000 meters, the ice is exceptionally transparent, which allows it to effectively capture the weak flashes of light that occur during rare interactions of neutrinos with ice atoms. Moreover, Antarctica's remoteness from human activity minimizes interference, ensuring the purity of the data. Construction of the Ice Cube Observatory began in 2005 and was completed in December 2010. The project is a giant three-dimensional array of 5,160 optical detectors arranged on 86 vertical threads. Each thread contains 60 detectors buried in ice to a depth of 2,450 meters. These detectors are capable of detecting Cherenkov radiation a faint glow that occurs when a neutrino interacts with the nucleus of an ice atom, producing a charged particle that travels faster than light in the medium. The observatory's work is based on the principle of registering these rare interactions. When a neutrino collides with an ice atom, a charged particle is formed that emits Cherenkov radiation. In short, Cherenkov radiation is an effect that occurs when a charged particle passes through a medium faster than light moves in this medium. Let's figure out how and why this happens, what experiments confirmed its existence, and how this phenomenon helps modern science. Let's be clear, the speed of light in a vacuum is an absolute limit. But if the medium is denser than a vacuum, say, water, glass, or some particularly boring dielectric, then light moves more slowly. In water, for example, the speed of light drops to about 2, two, five, zero, zero, zero kilometers per second. But charged particles, like electrons, can move faster than this local speed of light, resulting in an effect similar to a sonic boom only in the optical range. Just as a supersonic jet makes a loud bang, 
the particle creates a burst of electromagnetic radiation that we see as a mysterious blue glow. The idea of this phenomenon was first noticed in 1934, when Pavel Cherenkov, as a true experimental physicist, conducted his research on solutions irradiated with radioactive sources. The glowing liquids look beautiful, but the reason for this glow remained unclear. Later, in 1937, his colleagues Ilya Frank and Igor Tam explained the effect mathematically, for which the trio received the Nobel Prize in 1958. Now, everything was clear in the world of physics. If you see a blue glow, either you are in a pool with a nuclear reactor, or you are having a too radiative day. As it turns out, Cherenkov radiation is more than just a pretty visual effect, like a neon sign for physicists. It's a powerful tool, without which modern particle detectors would be as useless as an umbrella in a black hole. For example, the effect is used in neutrino telescopes, such as the famous Super Kamio Kandi in Japan, where huge tanks of ultra-pure water surround the detectors. When neutrinos, an almost elusive particle, interact with the water, electrons are released, which, if they're lucky, travel faster than the speed of light in this medium, causing the familiar glow. By analyzing this light, researchers can learn about the origins of neutrinos and sometimes even catch signs of supernova explosions. Moreover, Cherenkov radiation is used in medicine for cancer diagnostics, as well as for detecting radioactive materials. If you have something glowing with Cherenkov radiation in your hands, then either you are holding a container with radioactive waste, or you should urgently reconsider your life priorities. Against this backdrop, experiments with Cherenkov radiation continue. In 2018, studies were conducted using particle accelerators to more accurately measure the parameters of this effect and use it to improve sensors for space telescopes. In the long term, this effect may help in the development of new technologies in quantum optics and even in space research, unless, of course, someone decides to use it to create laser weapons. In parallel with Super Kamiokanda's discoveries, IceCube has also achieved impressive results. For example, in 2013, the observatory registered high-energy cosmic neutrinos for the first time, confirming their extragalactic origin. This discovery was an important step in the development of neutrino astronomy, providing a new tool for studying the most energetic processes in the universe. Then in 2018, a collaborative effort between IceCube and other observatories linked the detected neutrino to a blazar, an active galaxy with a massive black hole at its center. This event confirmed that blazars are sources of high-energy cosmic neutrinos, shedding light on the nature of cosmic particle accelerators. Despite these advances, however, neutrinos remain extremely difficult to study. Their interactions with matter are so rare that billions of neutrinos pass through our bodies every second without leaving a trace. This is similar to the situation with radio waves, which permeate us everywhere but remain undetectable. It is interesting to consider what might happen if neutrinos interacted with matter more actively. In this case, they could significantly influence the chemical processes in the atmosphere, changing its composition and, perhaps, affecting climate conditions. However, in reality, their influence is so small that they have no noticeable impact on our daily lives. Neutrinos also play a key role in the processes that occur in stars. They participate in thermonuclear reactions that support stellar combustion. Studying neutrinos emitted by the Sun and other stars allows scientists to look into their internal processes, inaccessible to direct observation. In addition, neutrinos can serve as messengers from the most remote and extreme corners of the universe.